Absolutely. I'm glad you said that because there's, there's a lot of meaning behind what we have done with the Handbook of Tecano History. One of the things that I thought would be important to say also is that it's no accident that we're working with TSHA on this. TSHA is also known for its involvement in, in the production of scholarly materials, but they're also very invested in transmitting that uh, knowledge to the public and, more importantly, including the public in these uh, activities. And I'm thinking about the education program where teachers and students are encouraged to study Tejano, Texas, Texas history and then to produce uh, products, exhibits, or presentations for Texas History Day. The, the Handbook of Texas is one way in which the Texas State Historical Association is, uh, uh, reaches out to the public. We are trying to do the same thing through the Handbook of Texas. We're trying to take this body of scholarly literature, uh, scholarly historical literature that has grown significantly s since the beginning around 40, 35 years ago, and now converting this material, and in many instances the very authors that are producing the books and the articles are now joining with us in the Handbook of Tejano History to generate the articles that now appear in the Handbook of And Texas. all of that is uh, working from the inside of the Texas State Historical Association because um, the TSHA has a philosophy of being an association, yes, of scholars, but the TSHA probably, I don't know, half of the members are not PhD historians. Half of our officers, our presidents, our programs, the people that we take the history to, that is the philosophy of the TSHA. So for us then to bring Tejano history into it is not really so much an initiative, it's part of the philosophy of the TSHA. We were always an integral part of it. I, I presented my first paper as a graduate student in about 1974, 1975 on Tejano history and I felt perfect. In fact, I was asked to present by the TSHA and as we, you and I, have been members through the decades, we have not only brought in other historians, Tejano historians, but we have seen them come in so that the TSHA, the diversity of the membership, the diversity of the papers that are presented at the annual meetings, the diversity of the publications, um, I think has definitely expanded. And it's one of the things that's part of our philosophy as mm -hmm. Tejano historians. Uh, our, our philosophy is we're not taking a segment of Texas history and saying, let's tell you about Tejanos. We're saying, let's tell you about Texas history mm -hmm and Tejanos is an integral part of it so that Tejanos expand the known base of, Te of Texas history. You've already spoken about, uh, to some extent, about the, the Tejano Monument. Uh, the Tejano Monument is now in the Handbook of Texas, in part because of our, of our project. We called on historians who had been participating in the development of Tejano history. We called them together. We had an initial meeting. Uh, with about uh, 60, 75. It was over 60, probably 70. 70, 75 uh, historians, and they all committed to write articles on topics that it, the Handbook of Texas had not yet addressed. And we were very fortunate in, in the fact that these historians, as well as others who joined us later, kept their promise to the extent that we, we had a goal of 100 new articles, well written, that, it, that adhered to uh, professional standards established by the Handbook of Texas. We had a goal of 100 new articles and we generated well over 300, which is a major accomplishment that reflects well not only on our project but on the Texas State Historical Association. And we didn't, we didn't do this by ourselves, and I know you're not implying that, but I, I want to mention that all along it's been a group project to begin with, it was the Tejano Monument Board of Directors, again, just like they funded the educational program. Mm -hmm. They used the last of their funds to match the TSHA to sponsor the Handbook of Tejano History. So it's ironic that the, that the Tejano Monument Board 
sponsors the initial founding of the Handbook of Tejano History, and then the Handbook of Tejano History writes an entry on the Tejano Monument, kind of the chicken or the egg thing. Well, that's a natural progression, I think, of uh, uh, the, the whole process of historical production for us. But uh, I think we also established a model for anybody else who may want to come forward and propose the TSHA to, to uh, uh, produce another special uh, Handbook of Texas project. We raised the money, we brought the leading historians together, they generated the articles, we processed the articles through the TSHA with the assistance of the chief historian and with a staff member. I'd like to add to that if we're gonna participate in such things as the His uh, Hispanic Heritage Month, that we ought to include in the celebration uh, increasing our knowledge about this important history. And, uh, you know, it used to be in the 60s and 70s, it was very difficult to find materials that we could use to teach the first courses on Mexican-American history. We can't say that anymore. There are a lot of materials, especially for families out there. Uh, every family, of course, should have their own library you know, fitting their interests. But in that uh, library, especially if you're interested in Texas history or Mexican-American history, Tejano history, you ought to include um, access, you know, give your children access to the articles that appear in the Handbook of Texas, the result of the uh, uh, Tejano history project that uh, TSHA uh, supported. So. Uh, on this month especially, acknowledge and make use of the articles that appear in the Handbook of Texas on Tejano history. And at the same time, the same sort of invitation to scholars who want to continue to contribute those scholarly entries to the Handbook of Tejano history.